this code of conduct that has been created from a set of regulations that have been put into place by the federal government. The purpose is to protect participants from risks and to safeguard from harm. Another takeaway from today, protection from risk and safeguards from harm. These led to the foundations of ethics. These three ethical foundations, respect for persons, beneficence, and justice, are the key for a researcher to have in mind as research is being uh, developed, um, protocols put into place, conduct the conduct of research itself. It's key for a com the compliance committee, the IRB, to review a type of research is happening, to make sure that you are following these regulations, but the development of the research itself must incorporate those three ethical principles. Exactly, what is research when it comes to, do, to uh, conducting, uh, uh, conducting some studies with individuals? Everyone knows, knows what research is. Research could be anything. Research in the visual arts, research in the humanities, research in the biological laboratory. And the basic research methodology, develop a hypothesis, prove or disprove it, collect your data, analyze it, present. That's, that's the basics of it. But when it comes to doing research with, it, with people, there's, a, there's more of a specific definition. And this question comes up a lot when someone is, proposes a research study and wants, wants to know, do I have to go to the IRB to get approval? Is there anything I need to be concerned about? Research as, de as defined by these regulations is someone who's engaged in, in research, who proposes to explore a particular topic, you know, following the research methodology, and you're interacting with a living individual. Um, these are individuals, the committee is made up of a variety of different, individu different individuals that have certain expertise, have the, have, um, um, the years of experience, but if they have some different, um, different types of, uh, they work from different disciplines that can look at a research study regardless of where it is, for example, at UMBC, and say that the review of this research looks appropriate, but did you think about providing a protection piece in your procedure? Or how are you gonna safeguard someone's information to, to uh, ensure that there will be no breach of confidentiality? Scientists and non-scientists, faculty, students, these are people that make up the committee here on campus. They have the, the, the discipline experience, but they're charged by the government to ensure that we as researchers, or, or the campus in general, comply with these rules and regulations that hold you know, the, 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 the circle of compliance. Um, there will be times when a research study may come before this committee that, it's, that may be unfamiliar with these individuals because look at their different, the, diff, the disciplines they make up. Um, doesn't mean that the research won't happen. The committee can bring in subject matter experts to advise them on the best way to provide those protections and those safeguards. As part of their oversight responsibilities, they must take, when they review the research study, look at the like, potential harms and risks that, that may that a participant may experience when they are involved in the study. These are just some examples of risks and harms of research that's done here at UMBC. Emotional, psychological harms, uh, financial harms, social harms, um, risks of legal prosecution, social stigma, um, and the like. Here's the studies. These are based on real studies that have occurred um, here on campus. Um, a student seeks to learn information about customer behavior. So he's gonna go into a middle school, interview these kids about candy purchases, and then once he collects all his data, um, he's gonna share the results with his colleagues, it's good research practice, um, and then post the information on an Honor Society website. And one of the, one of the ways he's collecting his information is recording their names and ages. So I'm now deputizing this whole group here to make you honorary IRB members. 
what are some, some really quick potential issues you may see or some good things you may see coming out of the study? Yes? Uh, possibly could. How would, how would you, put, what safeguard would you put in the place to protect the confidentiality? What would you think? Uh, I guess just to make anything anonymous. Okay, you can make anonymous information. Um, that's a good way to do it. Or, oh yeah, go ahead. Give that admission, That's another good point too. Yeah. Yeah, what's the purpose of recording those names? If, he need, if this person needed to go back later, it's good to have some identifying information. Um, with that in place, you would need to have some structure, some file that you keep protected somewhere, only available to you as the researcher, not to anybody else. Um, keep it within a safe area where no one else can have access to it. Okay? Permission is important. These are middle school kids. What, 13? 12, 13, 14 year olds, um, do you think they're able to understand a research study? We're all 12, 13, 14, what? Do we, under, we understood some things, right? But not everything? This is not a particularly risky study, but it's still important to inform these kids about the study and tell them this is what we want to do. That voluntary participation, ask them, do you want to participate? Not, not go into the room and say, hey, here's a bunch of candy, now I want to get, ask you some questions. It's kind of coercive. What's another important permission thing to, you have to get with this, with a particular group? Parental permission, right. These are, these are minors. Um, state of Maryland, you're a minor if you're under 18. If you want to involve someone in a research study, you must get their per the permission of the parent or the guardian. Okay? Um, yes? What about permission from the schools? Absolutely. The setting of the school, the setting of the research itself. You certainly go out here over to the, com yeah, to the commons and conduct some studies, anonymous, collecting some anonymous information. You would still need to tell the commons folks that you're coming in, maybe, maybe not. Um, it, is, it is a public area, but if you're going to a middle school in Baltimore County, it's important to let that teacher know if you're going to the classroom, the principal know, and you may have to go up to some levels within the county school structure to let them know you're conducting this research study because they also have a responsibility ensuring that their particular population is protected. 